Hello and welcome back to Introduction to Astronomy and in our previous segment we were talking about Sir Isaac Newton and uh, now we want to talk about Albert Einstein and what his contributions were to astronomy. So you'll notice that Albert Einstein is born in 1879 and died in 1955 and he comes up with his idea of the special theory of relativity in 1905. So, when Sir Isaac Newton came up with his law of gravity, and then he also came up with his laws of motion, for the next 200 years or so, everybody thought he was absolutely correct. And that uh, if you needed to calculate the orbit of a planet or uh, the motion of basically any object, you would always use his laws of motion his first, second, and third laws of motion, and to predict the orbit of a planet, you would combine that with his law of gravity. And he thought that gravity was a force. And so for the next 200 years, his ideas, everybody thought that they were correct. Well, we need to modify those theories uh, whenever you are traveling at a very fast speed. So. Um, he, uh, Albert Einstein's special theory of relativity works for any speed, no matter how fast you're going, but uh, the laws of Sir Isaac Newton begin to break down as the speed of an object approaches the speed of light. So some of the interesting things that uh, happen are that our measurement of space so length and width and height begin to change. Our measurement of time, our measurement of the mass of an object, and the measurement of the energy of an object begin to change the faster that you go. Okay, so just to give you an idea for how strange some of these objects are, let's pretend that I am in a rocket ship and I'm moving at very fast speed, close to the speed of light. And then as I pass by, so you're out there, and I pass you by, uh, I am going to look at a ruler. So you are going to have are going to hold out a ruler like this, and then I, in my rocket ship, am going to hold out a ruler, and then we're going to compare our rulers as I fly by. And what I'm going to find out is that your ruler is skinnier, so it has gotten thinner, and it's not just that. So you are going to look skinnier to me, and not only you, but the entire planet. So everything is going to scrunch down, and it scrunch, the, the faster you go, the more it scrunches down. So that if you were going at the speed of light, then what I would see would just be a straight line up and down, because the entire universe would collapse to that one straight line. Now, you on Earth looking at me as I fly past, you'd say, you're crazy, because it's your ruler is the one that got smaller, and your body got skinnier, and your rocket ship got skinnier as it flew past. And according to Albert Einstein, both views are equivalent. To each other. Uh, another thing is uh, that the mass of an object increases the faster it goes. So things gain mass as, as their, their speed increases. Another thing is that time slows down. So there's a lot of peculiar things that happen in special relativity. Another thing that he showed was that space and time actually are one fabric, which we call space-time. So space, which is up and down, sideways, in and out, so that's three dimensions, actually has to be combined with time to make four-dimensional space-time. Okay. Now, he wasn't satisfied with that. So that would have, you know, gotten anybody else, uh, 
they would be completely satisfied with that theory and they could probably retire, you know, just on that accomplishment. But he wanted to know what would happen if you were accelerating. And so he wanted to know how time and space, mass and energy change in a frame of reference that is accelerating relative to another one. So you notice that with special relativity, it was speed. Now he's interested in accelerating frames of reference. And so what he found was that gravity causes objects to accelerate. So if you take a ball and you drop it, it's, as it's falling, it's going to speed up. So gravity is a type of acceleration. So gravity can be explained using his general theory of relativity. Uh, and so he came up with a set of 10 equations. So they're called the field equations. So he's got these 10 equations that are written in terms of, of calculus. And you have to solve all 10 equations at the same time. So it's bad enough having like two equations and two unknowns in algebra that you had to solve. Well, this would be 10 equations and 10 unknowns. And you have to use calculus in order to understand them. And you have to use multiple dimensions in order to understand them. So you have to use this thing that's called tensor calculus. So it's very complicated. Won't even show you that. But if you go to the internet and you type in Einstein's field equations, you can see examples of them. Okay, but I did want you, however, to know the implications of general relativity. So one of them is that mass bends space and time. So we said space and time go together to make space time. And so you can imagine if there's no mass present, then space time is unbent. So um, on your bed, for example, your bed is pretty flat and you could take a tennis ball and roll it across the flat bed and do you notice it goes in a straight line? Well, that's what Sir Isaac Newton would say. Objects in motion stay in motion and they go in a straight line. Okay, but now take a bowling ball and put it in the middle of your bed and then take that same tennis ball and roll it and you'll notice that it tends to curve. So the tennis ball is going to curve because it's feeling the curvature of the bed caused by that bowling ball there in the middle. And so Albert Einstein said that the mass of a star bends space and time around it and then objects follow that curvature. Do you notice that Albert Einstein never uses the word force of gravity? That's Sir Isaac Newton. So Newton would explain the orbit in terms of a force, a push or a pull, on the object, whereas Albert Einstein would explain it in terms of a curvature of space and time. So pretty interesting stuff, and I'll let you read about it if you want. But that is the real explanation for how nature works on large scales. So when you're talking about anything from, uh, anything from the atom up to the size of the universe, we tend to use general relativity in order to explain it. Anything that's the size of the atom and smaller, we tend to use quantum mechanics in order to explain it. And the interesting thing is quantum mechanics this, the, the way that objects operate when they're really small, this uh, quantum mechanics is the only theory that explains it. And general theory is the only theory that explains large scale objects. So you can't use quantum mechanics to explain stars and you can't explain the atom using general relativity. The two just don't go together. And so um, that's one of the goals in physics and astronomy is to come up with a unified 
theory that would explain everything. And we will talk about that at the very end of our uh, course. Okay, uh, just want to show this to you that here's a historical chart. So we've been talking about Ptolemy and then Copernicus and then Kepler and then uh, so all of these very famous people. So I just wanted you to see uh, where they kind of fall in the timeline of history. And you notice that uh, obviously Tol uh, Ptol Ptolemy is not on that list because he would be way over here somewhere and then uh, Einstein is not on the list because he's way over here somewhere. But for most of the people we've been talking about, you can see where, when they lived and also some other historical figures that lived with them. Okay, in our next segment, I'm gonna, this is gonna be appendices that uh, I do some derivations of some of the formulas that we have discussed. So for you students, my students who are watching these videos, you don't need to worry about this for the exam. See, it says in big bold letters up there, you will not have to do this on the exam. But I hope that you'll come back in the next segment and we'll just look at some of these derivations, okay?